Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Luke. You know, we spent a lot of time, you and I, messaging back and forth. Yes. We talk about everything from A to Z. Yeah. Well, you've heard of computer hacks before. Yes. There is a new hack out that affects messaging. Oh, boy. We're going to tell you all about it on the next Men Are So Smart. Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. We're going to call this episode, Don't Be That Guy. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to be that guy. Cyber criminals are trying to scam consumers through text messages. Yes, What's it's next? gotten to this point. Here's how to avoid them. If you've got a phone, and I know I do, you've probably received a spam text. Most of the time, they're from bar contests you've drunkenly signed up for <laughs> and forgot about oh so long ago. No, just keep making that up. Either way, we all get spam, but there's a special form of spam text that cyber criminals use to trick hapless victims into willfully giving up everything from their phone number to their social security number. Uh, it's easy to fall for these traps, but there are a few things you can uh, do to avoid becoming a victim. Smishing for info. Smishing, that's the new term. Smishing. Smishing or SMS phishing, SMS is texting, mm -hmm. uh, scams are similar to your standard email phishing scams with the exception that rather than email, the scammer attempts to trick you, the prospective victim via a text message sent to their phone rather than an email. Uh, it's actually an even more duplicitous w way of scamming victims. That's because text messages have a greater sense of urgency than emails. That's true. When I get a text, I immediately take a look at it and see what it's about. Uh, after all, if you receive a text message from someone, it has to be important. Or does it? Yeah. Uh, okay, when you get a smishing text, you'll likely see something asking you to call a phone number, or even worse, click a link to address an issue by providing your bank account, smartphone data, or some other form of highly personal information. A classic example of smishing attempt, the link has been blurred to prevent others from visiting it. That's handy. Calling a phone number could result in someone's talking you into giving up your SSN, uh, banking information, or website login information. Click on a link in your text messages, and it could take you to a fraudulent website meant to make you think it's from something like your bank, wireless service provider, or even the IRS. Clicking that link alone may settle you with malware or on your smartphone, but if you actually enter your personal information on such a site, you could be turning it over to criminals who could then take over your private accounts. Say, for example, you give your login information to your smartphone data carrier. A criminal could then use that to capture your account and steal your phone number. Uh, they can use that to bypass other forms of security you use, like te text message-based and two-factor authentication to provide your online accounts. It's not an exaggeration to say that if someone steals your information, they can take full control over some of your most private accounts. How to avoid smishing. Listen up, smishy. The best way to avoid it is to simply ignore any texts you get from numbers you do not recognize. Yep. But some scammers can spoof their numbers to appear as though the messages are coming from numbers you might recognize. So if you want to be especially safe, simply avoid opening any link sent to you that ask for your login information, and if you're told to call a number, don't do it. Never don't do, do it. it. Not yep. gonna do it. Uh, if you think you've reached a fraudulent text or call, contact your wireless carrier or the institution the person on the other end of the bank, uh, on the other end of the line, claims to represent. From there, you can see if you're being tricked or you got an actual issue. But in reality, chances are. It's a scam. If you do happen to open a link sent to you via text message, be sure to download an anti-malware app for your smartphone and run it immediately to sniff out any threats 
that you may have inadvertently downloaded to your handset? Uh, so just remain vigilant and above all, take a second before opening the next text. I'll tell you what I do. So if I get something from my bank, which occasionally I, I get alerts from my bank if, you know, if we're out of town and I've charged up kind of a, some high bills, I'll get a text alert from them. Um, I don't use the link provided on the, uh, on the phone. I open up a new window and go through the way I've always contacted my bank. Start and make sure that everything starts with an HTTPS. S stands for secure. So if you're going to an HTTP site, it's not a secure site and you could be ending up in a, right in the middle of a hacker's dream. Yeah, that's all we really need, right? Yeah. Um, I've been noticing a lot of phone calls that I get. Uh, the iPhone has a function where sometimes it comes up and says, scam likely. Yes. Do you get those? Yes. But then again, on the other hand, I get messages. Uh, I can't do that without giving my phone number out. I sure as hell don't want to do that. <laughs> anyway, let's just say that my area code is 916. And I the first three numbers of my phone are 915. So it's 916, 915. That's all I'm going to give you. But I get calls from 916, 915, 2777. And it'll say... Rio Linda. Right. And I'll tell you another thing that just happened to me, Ronnie. I forgot to mention this. You know how we were on special assignment last week. Right. One of my special assignments was a conference call with um, Australia, Tasmania to be specific. And it, that's how far this, this program goes. It goes around the world. So I'm on the phone with them. And uh, as it rings, I look at it and I go, that's weird. It says Toledo, Ohio. And so I asked this person about that, and they said, I think I dialed an extra one. Oh, okay. Because it was an international call. Correct. Clear as a bell, though, I will tell you that. It was my first international call. <laughs> wow, it's like I was talking to my next-door neighbor. In any case, be careful, okay? Yeah. There are a lot of possibilities out there that we're just starting to see, and it, perhaps maybe it's too soon for us to even wrap our heads around it yet. Just be careful. Never, as a rule, never click on a link that comes from someone that you don't know. Never do yeah. that. And unfortunately, every time your phone carrier comes up with new security measures, hackers find a way to get around them. Yeah. If so, those hackers put their efforts into an actual real job... Yeah, they could cure about, cancer. They could. Yeah. They really could. <laughs> okay, that'll do it for us on this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you learned something, give it a click. A thumbs up would be great. We'll be sending you a text shortly. Yes, and <laughs> with the link. <laughs> uh, subscribe to our channel while you're there. Doesn't cost a dime. We really need to increase our number of subscribers. It doesn't do anything for us. But it sure does a lot for YouTube. We want to make them happy while we still have a show. That's right. Right, Ronnie? <laughs> Cut us off. I'm Luke Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. Next time, we'll see you on Men Are So Smart.